You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. May the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may meet your needs. May He remove your greatest need and take away your greatest affliction. So in the name of Jesus, be free from this curse that is afflicting your soul your body, impeding you from seeing and understanding God's purposes in your life. So receive deliverance right now, freedom right now, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you who believe you say amen, and thanks be to God. You know, my dear listeners, you know that the something that makes the human being most terrified is called death. It's certain. Everybody knows that what is worse in this world is death. Everybody knows that one day they shall die. And because of this, terrible moment, they want to live, they want to live intensely away from it, so they do whatever it takes to maintain themselves on the top in life, but as time goes by, they pursue a life of quality, they pursue their dreams, making them, fighting for them to become true, and eventually nothing takes place because they remain in suffering, and they suffer and suffer, but the fear of dying, of death, does not let them go, and as long as time goes by, Soon is death for these people. And what I want to, to talk to you about is here in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, when the religious Pharisees, when the hypocrites, they tried and they were able to get lying witnesses against Stephen. And then they condemned Stephen. And the, the verse I want to read with me is this. It's on chapter 7, the book of Acts, verse 16. That reads like this. When he was being stoned, when he was being stoned, he says, Then he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. So he forgave them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Meaning, the Bible is so precious because it says that after he prayed for those who were stoning him, those who were persecuting him, when he forgave and prayed for them, when he prayed for his enemies, we would say, he fell asleep. The, the word is asleep. He didn't die. Stephen didn't die. He fell asleep. Why? What is the difference? 
Uma well, coisa é morrer. One thing is to die. É adome and another thing is to fall asleep. É de Deus, when a person is of God, o de Deus, when a person has God's spirit, spirit when a person Jesus, receives the spirit of Jesus, they receive the spirit of resurrection. And then fulfills that word disse, that Jesus said, He who believes in me, morra, even Ele though morre, they die, viverá. they shall live. E foi o caso de And Estevam. this is the, the case of Stephen. Estevam Stephen, não morreu. he did not ele die. Adormeceu. He fell asleep. Porque And why? Tinha Because he had the spirit of resurrection, the spirit of the Lord Jesus. Quem crê, so he quem who believes, he who assumes their faith in the Lord Jesus does not nunca. die. Never dies. Muito pelo contrário, to the contrary, adormece. they actually fall Uma asleep. Coisa é outra coisa é to fall asleep is one, one thing, and to die is another. Santo, so those who don't morre, have the Holy mesmo. Spirit, when they don't have the Holy Spirit, Mas they die. But the person <laughs> that has de Deus God's Spirit, não morre. they don't Ela die. Adormece. They fall asleep. E você sabe, and you know, a a gente faz isso todo we dia, do that, né? we fall asleep quando every day, deita, right? When, you, deitamos, when we rest, when we lay down noite, on our bed at night, deitamos, and we sleep, we, we lay down and sleep. We fall asleep, nada. so we don't feel nothing. We don't feel the... the sono, mas não we don't feel sleepy, não sentimos sleepy nada. but... Nós nothing comes over, we just, we just fall asleep. Criança, like a bebê. child. Like a little baby. E é And que this é is what is glorious. É isso que é this is what's majestic. Because what the world medo, fears the most, mundo, what makes morte, the world to dread about, for those who have God's spirit, <laughs> a morte é death is Porque actually a beautiful thing because ela it doesn't come. It makes us to fall asleep. The Holy Spirit transforms death of his children, of his servants, of his followers, of those who are anointed by him, transforms death into a sleep, a moment to sleep. A person sleeps here on earth and wakes up in the morning in heaven. And this is the reason, this is the greatest reason why we preach the gospel. We preach the gospel so that people may have the knowledge that Jesus is alive. Just as he resurrected, we also we are going to resurrect because of the Spirit that was in Him that now is in us. And is the Spirit of Resurrection. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Resurrection. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Life. And because of this Spirit, we maintain ourselves in peace and we pass on to eternity in this peace. See this, when a person has the Holy Spirit, they, they live in peace, they have peace, and why so? Because it's obvious that if they receive the spirit of peace, within them there is peace, although on the outside is living war. On a daily basis, we face this world of the devil, we face the kingdom of hell, we are, we are inserted and we are among the kingdom of God. Although the kingdom of darkness is what rules in this world. So who lives in the kingdom of the devil? When they die, they truly die. They die and they go straight to hell. But when a person comes from the kingdom of the devil, the kingdom of darkness, they leave the devil's kingdom and enter God's kingdom. And when you enter God's kingdom is when you submit to the rules and to the discipline of the kingdom of God. 
So you submit yourself to the word of the Lord Jesus, who is the king. So when a person is in the kingdom of darkness, they obey their own instincts. They obey their emotions. They follow their heart. They follow their heart, their feelings. They have the desire to go to, to party, so they party. They use drugs, so go ahead and they do it. They have desire to sleep around, they go ahead and do it. They desire to live in a disorderly life, they go ahead. They live a life in the way they please, free, supposedly, to no commitment of truth. They have no commitment with discipline, with order. They live their life about. They live as they will. And when they die, they will also go to hell. They go straight to hell. And there is no escape or alternative. But when this person who has been living a life, with this liberty, and now they surrender and assume their faith in the Lord Jesus, and not only in the Lord Jesus alone, or saying, oh, I believe in Jesus, I believe in God. No, the belief in the Lord Jesus involves obedience to His word, obedience to His voice, obedience to his laws, so the person becomes, when they, when they come to God's kingdom, when they leave the kingdom of darkness, and they come to God's kingdom, they are now under a discipline. The kingdom of the devil is a, a kingdom of theft, of injustice, of a kingdom of deceit, lies is a kingdom that each one does what they please. It's like a, the animal world. It's like an animal world. They do as they wish. The, the, the strongest kills the weakest. Pretty much like that. So when they abandon this kingdom and come in God's kingdom, they become now disciplined. And then there is no more that spirit of revenge, of hatred, of cruelty, nothing of that sort, nothing of that nature, but it's God's nature. So it's the case of Stephen. Stephen, when he was stoned to death because of his faith, he was talking and announcing that Jesus was alive. So then they began to stone him. And what did he do? Stephen instead prayed. He prayed for those who were stoning him, those who were accusing him. So he prayed for them. And when, and when, all of a sudden, for other people that would die, he fell asleep instead. Who lives in God's kingdom does not die, but falls asleep. This is glorious. Who lives in God's kingdom, they do not know what death is, but they fall asleep. They have no agony when they die. They, they are not dreading about death. They are not scared of death. Death, death does not intimidate those that are in God's kingdom. The, uh, the Apostle Paul said, for me to die is a gain. It's a gain. And it's true. It's gain to die to those that are in God's kingdom, that live in this discipline and obedience on God's word. So you can see many believers, many Christians who call themselves Christians. I'm Christian of this denomination, of this ministry here. I have so much years and I know the Bible. 
but in reality do not obey God's word. Just as they know the word of God and they read the Bible, they go to the church on Sunday, but they also go to their parties in the weekends. They also go to the... They live a life of deceit and lies of this world and they are also disputing with the unbelievers, those who live in the kingdom of the devil like them. They are also among that crowd. They are also enjoying themselves together with them. But those who are in God's kingdom, they live subjected to God's word and God's discipline, God's law. So instead of cursing, cursing someone out, cursing those who were doing him evil, Stephen, in this case, who was in God's kingdom, who is in God's kingdom, instead prayed and said, Lord, do not hold this sin against them, so please forgive them. Having said this, he fell asleep. How wonderful, huh? This is very powerful for you to have this personal conviction, this personal certainty that it's not given to everybody. Not everyone has this conviction. Instead, few are the ones, unfortunately, the ones who have. So you who are listening to me right now, you who are listening to me right now, and by any chance you did not, you are still living, perhaps, in the kingdom of darkness, in the kingdom of sin, in the kingdom of lies and promiscuity, of adultery, of betrayal and deceit, or on the, on the kingdom of theft. And you want to leave this kingdom. You, you know, you, you are tired of it. You, you want to let go. So then, don't just say, I believe in Jesus. If you do not let go of your sin, if you do not abandon your sin, if you do not repent from your sins and baptized in waters, so then, my dear listener, you have no right to enter God's kingdom and consequently you're going to stay behind, out of salvation. And if you die, you're going to die indeed. But if you repent from all your sins, your wrongdoings, and you subject yourself to God's kingdom day after day, like Jesus said, he who, who follows me, deny yourself, sacrifice, sacrifice your flesh, your will, your desire, take up your cross. Meaning, another sacrifice, the cross is a sacrifice, and follow me, and to follow him is a sacrifice on a daily basis, because you need to deny, you need to deny your own passion, your own desires, your own feelings of the heart, so that, in no, so that then you can do God's will. You know, it's like Paul says that the ones who are in flesh cannot please God. A person being in flesh, you know what it is? Is to follow the desires of the heart. To follow the intuition of the heart. And to be in spirit is to follow the word of the Lord Jesus. Is to obey the word of God. So, you are this kind of person, either you are in flesh or you are in spirit. If you are in spirit, when you pass on to eternity, you shall fall asleep. But if you are in flesh, you are going, and you, and you die, you're going to go straight to hell. And there's no way out. If you believe, or you, there's no discussion. If you believe or you don't believe, it's your problem. It's what is written. It's what we believe. It's what is written in God's word. And no one can deny it. Is that right, my dear listener? Understand this. The day is approaching when you will be gone. 
from this world. What will you take to eternity is your soul. Your soul doesn't die. Your soul does not die in no such way. Either it remains in hell alive or remains alive in heaven, in God's kingdom. Thanks be to God. When this journey of life comes to an end And when death comes to your door Where will your soul be taken? And where will you spend eternity? For death, none but you may decide. Cause tomorrow may just be too late. And Christ earns to set you free. You try to find peace in this world. That come and go But in the end Tired and empty you find They can satisfy no more The afraid to Tomorrow may just be too late And Christ earns to set you free Why do you love my dear friend When you hear of the Lord's coming don't you know only Jesus can give salvation through his death on the cross? The afraid to they ever joins life or death, none where you may decide. Tomorrow may just be too late In Christ earns to set you free Your Lord is then so has no right To gaze upon the face of the Lord Life or 
set you free. The void in my myself, it was undescribable. It felt, I felt empty. I felt incomplete. I'm not, I was never satisfied with my, myself. I, I felt like no one understood what I was going through whatsoever, no matter how hard I tried to explain myself. It wasn't something verbally I could speak to somebody about. It was just a really dark place where I was inside of my mind. I always wanted to disappear. I, I would put myself into activities to keep my mind busy so that I wouldn't think about the things that were inside of my mind, of comparisons, of, of people's judgments, criticisms about myself. So it was always something inside of my mind to compare, to be better with somebody else. I would always be compared by my siblings, physically, right? Um, they were smaller, much more petite, so physically wise, I would be the, the giant of, of them. I also was overweight, so that would also trigger comments about my weight, why didn't I look, or why wouldn't I look like my sisters? It was hard for me to be social because I had those things inside of my mind, how my appearance was, I wasn't so slim, I couldn't, fit into the right clothes, the trendy clothes. So it, it, it definitely created something in my mind, a comparison always happening inside of my mind. I felt ashamed, I was embarrassed. The void inside of my life definitely, after I came out of that, 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 that faint, was in my mind. I had and I wanted to do something. I heard about the fasting of Daniel when I was participating in one of the meetings. Um, it was a Wednesday meeting, I believe and I definitely wanted in. Everything that the church had told me about what I should do to encourage or to actually grow my faith, I went in 100%. I wanted, I wanted peace, I wanted clarity, I wanted to be able to know how to move out of the situations that I was in. I was told the Holy Spirit would be able to give me those things, the direction, the peace, the serenity. So this, I, once I heard the direction, I was in. The hardest thing that I went through in the 21 days is to believe that I could receive the Holy Spirit. I was always negative with myself. I, I went through the, the negativity with other people. So the criticisms from other people, I also, I kept to myself. I, I generated my own criticisms for myself. So I thought I was never gonna receive. So what I did was I, I put in my head every day you're gonna receive the Holy Spirit. You're gonna receive the Holy Spirit today. No, don't worry about anybody else. You're gonna receive the Holy Spirit. You want, you obeyed, you're doing everything what the church, the pastors, the bishops are telling you. So God has to honor your faith, right? So I, every day when I went through the church to do the prayers, I put my all, my best, everything. I can say that the hardest part was my friends because that was what I would turn to if I had any problems or issues. But I had to learn through the fasting that, you know, you have to put your trust in God. He's going to give you the ultimate uh, encouragement, the right direction. Like the way that my thoughts changed, the, the perception that I had on others, my, my awareness around people, myself most importantly. Just me, I had a peace inside of my mind, something I never experienced ever in my entire life. This is for sure the best sense of direction, clarity that I've ever experienced and I continue to persevere for it, no matter what happens. I encourage you to really take it seriously only you know what kind of situation that you're going through and how desperately you want to go through it. So that same desperation has to match what you need to give to God. The void inside of me was depression, a low self-esteem and loneliness. I always felt that I needed to be around a lot of people, a lot of friends 
to feel wanted, to feel valued. It got to a stage where I depended a lot on boyfriends. Um, I always needed to have a boyfriend. I never gave myself a break. Um, I would always want them to tell me nice things. And if someone said something bad, that would um, ruin everything for me. I would feel so bad about myself. Um, I used to party a lot. Um, and, you know, even though I was around a lot of people, I would go home and still feel empty and still feel very, very depressed. I tried many things, um, relationships, music, um, going out a lot. I, I never wanted to be by myself. Um, when I was alone, I would always, you know, tell myself bad things, um, make myself feel worse. I would also compare myself to a lot of women, other women. If someone looked nicer, I would think, oh, well, I'm not good enough. Um, so I used to value myself and, and compare myself to other people a lot. Uh, one day I was in the Universal Church and I heard about the 21 days for the first time. And it was something new because um, it was a purpose that was never done before. And I, I took it with joy, I took it with a determination, but I could never fulfill it. Um, you know, I was very much into media, into TV, and I would start very well, but I could never finish. When the 21 days came around again, I took the opportunity this time and I said, no, I need the Holy Spirit. I need to fill that emptiness with His presence because if I don't, I'm never going to be happy. I'm always going to remain the same way. So I sacrificed my sleep. I love sleep and I woke up at 3 a.m. to pray, to seek the Holy Spirit. I cut out the Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, phone calls, um, but the, the biggest thing for me was surrendering my heart to God. But in this last 21 days, I didn't break. I went all the way until the end. I'm very happy within myself now. I'm joyful. I don't need to be around a lot of people to feel happy, to feel good about myself. Uh, my relationship with God has grown a lot. Um, I used to struggle reading the Bible before and I don't struggle with that anymore. I don't feel lonely. I always feel His presence around me and I've overcome many things that I didn't think I'd be able to overcome. I was very fearful and very easily intimidated, but now I'm no longer like that. I actually have a, a friend of mine who, she's not in the church, but um, she's seen a change in me, my vision has grown. Um, I have a lot of desire to help other people. I have a love for other people as well. Um, I used to be very selfish, but now I can give to others. The voice inside of me was anger. I used to get angry so much. And especially when I got mad, I used to do a lot of crazy stuff. Especially a person like me, I used to be around gun all the time. So that voice was getting destroyed my life. It getting so bad because, because the same anger caused me to get locked up so many times because I couldn't control it. I did a lot of things. I thought it was like if I get more money, I would be happy. It wasn't. I think um, travel, travel all over the world, meet all kind of different females, it was going to be to close this emptiness that I have inside of me, but it didn't. I find about the 21 days, the first time when I came to the church, it was telling me about the 21 days. But I tried it, but I didn't finish. And the second time, and when the 21 days came, and I decided to do it till the end, that's when I, I start taking that for very seriously. I take it straight, and I, I was like, um, stay away from everybody I know that come with a negative talk. And I, I used to talk a lot about my friend back home. I cut all this thing off. All I, all my mind was to seek for God more. Because that time, I used to love TV, I love basketball, I love watch soccer. And I'm a type of person who used to talk a lot on the phone. And I'm, I talk a lot of female on the phone. That time, I take all these things away from me. And then I just saved myself to seek for God. When I received the Holy Spirit, the first thing that I see in me is I come. Because I, I used to be, I have a lot of anger. I very calm. And then um, I didn't have peace inside of me. I have peace, and I never communicate with people. Every time I talk to somebody, it's always gonna be a problem that I, I have to, if I don't pull a gun, if I don't get mad and 
do, do crazy stuff and I can feel that these things are not there anymore. I can feel that I'm, I'm a different person. The number one that I find in me is that I, I didn't ever want people around me. I'm a type of person that I always want to be by myself because I know what type of person I am. So, and I start, call, I start talking to people. I start like, I can feel that inside of me that I want to help people because I'm a type of person that I, in my past, I used to be a person that do a lot of things to use people. I can see that I, I don't have that type. I'm not a type of person anymore to use people. I start helping people more. People around me, they really see that I'm changed because I so hanger, I so have this hanger is to control me. I can have, I didn't have the power to control this hanger. I can see like when people now see me, they're like, something gotta be wrong. It's not the same person that I know, the Angela that I know. Now why are you so calm? Why you have, I say, my friend, it's only God that's controlling me because I didn't have the control of, of my own self. But now they can see it. Even when I talk to my people back home, they can see I, I, I really sound different person. Even my mom's like, I just can't, I just can't be, I wanna see you. Because the way you talk now, I can feel that inside of you, you have peace. Well, I used to be very depressed. Um, I used to feel very lonely. My parents used to argue at home, verbally and physically, um, throughout my entire childhood. I used to feel empty inside. I was always the outcast in my school. I would never have any friends. I would be the only girl sitting in the lunch table where people would always talk about me. Um, I'd get bullied by many kids, boys and girls in school. So I used to be very depressed to the point where I became suicidal. I used to cut myself in my arms, my legs, I get into a car accident like go against a tree or a trailer that was in front of me. The other time was I attempted with a rope by myself in my in my room. Um, I tried to like choke myself with a rope, but it wouldn't it didn't go all the way through the rope, so it failed. Um, and that was I felt like that was the only way out um, that it was something that made me feel good from all the pain that I was going through. It was something that relieved the pain, the ease and kept me sane throughout my depression and the difficult times I was going through. At home, my older sister and my younger sister would always get the attention and the love and the affection I was looking for from my parents, I would never get it from them. So I tried to look for it outside in the world through having boyfriends and going from guy to guy. And unfortunately, I never found um, the real love. It was all temporary. I would always get cheated on and I'd always get left like on the scene there. And I'd always feel depressed. Well, my first 21 days was um, I decided that I wanted to change my life completely and so I decided to do the 21 days when the pastor mentioned it and I disconnected myself from all social media. I would start listening to uh, church music. I would start reading the Bible more. I put God first. I prioritized Him first. I did more for Him and less for me, like with the things that I wanted to do. I stopped talking to many people that didn't benefit me, people that, and conversations that weren't worth it. And so I decided to do, I decided to go to church more Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, and then Saturdays to evangelize. So I started doing more for God, and I put all my fleshly desires aside, and I decided to make a change because I wanted a change in my life. I didn't like living the way I was living. The hardest thing to sacrifice during the 21 days of Daniel was social media, Instagram, Snapchat. It was always a big part of my life because in the past, I used to never talk to my sisters or anything. So. I would always communicate myself with friends and uh, behind all of that. So giving up Snapchat and Instagram, it was like giving up my life, you know, because it was a huge part of my life. Well, the peace of having the Spirit of God is it's great. Like when I go home, my house is full of peace. There may be problems here and there, but the problems just go away. They disappear and there's more peace within me, my sisters, my parents. Well, now I'm more happy. I feel like I don't need to go from guy to guy to find the happiness. Now I do more for God and less for me. You know, I put God before everything. I put My studies is very important to me. It's always been a huge part of my life, but I always put God before it. Um, now, if I have to go to service on Wednesdays and Fridays and Sundays, it's like a joy to go. I can't wait to, for those days to come so that I can go to service or I can just be in the presence of God. Um, I would, even if I have a test the next day and I didn't study for it, I still always go to service first and then I study, even if it's staying up till 3 in the morning, writing a paper, whatever it may be, I still go because God gave me this, this happiness, this, He filled me with His Spirit and I feel like I can do so much, I have to do so much more for Him. When I am alone
A follower waits for bread and fish. A disciple is a fisherman. A follower fights for growth. A disciple fights to reproduce. A follower surrenders part of their goods. A disciple gives up all their life. A follower loves freedom. A disciple enjoys serving and sacrifice. A follower is worth because they add. A disciple because they multiply. A follower is conditioned by circumstances. A disciple uses it to exercise their faith. A follower is valuable. A disciple is indispensable. Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. Put an end to all your suffering and your pain. In your fall you also gain all the joy you have. In life this world has drained And it seems to have no end Every dream you had Has gone without a trace And you've tried to find your place But found disgrace Illusions turn to stones Tears appear to fall There's still one thing left to do It all depends on you You can turn the old and make it new It all depends on you Take a look at what you're going through But still he cares for you Surrender all to Him and you will see It all depends on you He can change your life and take you high It all depends on you He can bring the sun back to your sky And still He'll care for you All you have to do Trust your life in Him